hello and welcome back to my studio I'm Gina and in the spirit of trying things that push me outside of my comfort zone I'm going to try and make a Chesterfield sofa I'm going to make it out of fabric first and then I'll paint it to look like leather but this little guy here is a chair that I created in a recent miniature club project so I'm really stoked with how this one's turned out it's really super cute and what I did is I've actually got a pattern of this or a kit of this chair and, but I've got two two-seater sofas so it's slightly bigger than this but I want to turn this into a Chesterfield which means that the back of it is going to be the same height as the arms we're going to have some rolled pieces at the back which isn't currently there at the moment like this is all solid wood and even the cushion on the front here is is a little bit different because it sort of sits so anyway there's lots of differences with it is what I'm trying to get to so it's going to take a little bit of kit bashing is that the word oh my god I don't know that sounds like the word it sounds awful though so yeah so this is <laughs> this is going to be interesting I've got some ideas of how to do the upholstery work but I'm not sure how that's going to go. I've got two of these, so even if I muck up the first one, uh, at least it will be a test piece. I'd really like to have two. Um, and again, these are pieces that I really don't know where they're going to go. Like, I don't actually have a project for them to go into. But hopefully, once they're done, something's going to form around them. So it's a bit like this spiral staircase that I made. That was just an idea that I just needed to get out of my head. This is something very similar but yeah let's um look let's just get into it and just see how this is going to come together it's going to be an interesting ride so come along on this with me and yeah let's get started so this is the kit it comes with a mix of foam board and mdf as well as a set of instructions which are incredibly detailed but first off what i need to do is actually create the back part of the chesterfield sofa so the bit that rolls around the arms i'm not too worried about they're already preformed but the back isn't so i'm going to use a mixture of uh, foam board and i'm going to remove the paper off one side uh, which will allow me to shape it into the roll that goes around the back of the sofa. So with a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of sanding and a little bit of cutting away of the foam board I'm pretty happy with how this is actually coming together. I think it's going to give me the look that I'm after. And just while uh, I need to kind of get on to the next part I'm just going to glue these two pieces together. There is the option to do these two separately but for this particular sofa I'm just going to glue these two pieces together. And then I'm going to cut a piece of fabric on the bias which is basically a 45 degree angle across the um, across the weft of the fabric and then I'm just going to wrap that around I'm not going to put any glue on the face I'm only going to put glue on the underside and the top side of it and the idea here is to reduce the amount of bulk 
as much as possible within the fabric so that's why I'm just cutting those corners away and just pressing those into place so I'm just going to set that aside to dry and then I can carry on with the back of the sofa So to create the buttons detail um, across the back and the arms of the sofa, I'm basically taking exactly the same approach and I'm just going to measure out where I want those to go and then I'm just going to make some indents into the foam board. So this is the back of the back part of the sofa on the foam board before I, I glue it into place and then I'm just punching holes all the way through it so that once I put the fabric on top of it, I can actually create some little stitches in where those holes actually are and this is going to create the pull or the tuck detail uh, which is sort of some faux buttons or you know detailing like that and I do that all along the back of the sofa as well as the arms of the sofa. So once I'm happy with all of the stitching detail, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the sofa together and starting with just gluing the arms. They've already, in the in the kit, they already come with the roll on them and then all I need to do is cover them with this, that um, batting type of fabric and then roll that around the arms. And the reason why I've got this all, this fabric all in one piece was to really give that a look of the fabric wrapping around the, um, around the arms and the back of the sofa. So this is one way of doing it. Um, I probably could have done it in a couple of pieces, but I felt that this was going to give me a better look overall. And then I'm just um, wrapping it around the back part and then I'll do the same for the arms as well. And just using those um, cut off pieces of wood uh, just to try and get a really nice tight seam uh, around both the arms and the back. So using just a piece of cardstock, um, this particular cardstock happens to be black. It doesn't have to be black, it'll be white if you, if you want it to be. I'm just uh, covering it uh, with a piece of fabric the same size as the back piece as well as the arms but before I put on the arms I'm just going to fold in the front pieces and then create uh, some pieces that go along the front um, round the roll of the arm there as well so it's starting to come together I think there was at one point there I really thought that this was never going to get there but sometimes you've just got to embrace that ugly stage of the build uh, and this certainly had one of those stages so there's the couple of side pieces going on and then it's really starting to finish it off in a really lovely way. So this is the front pieces for the uh, rolled part of the arms. It's really small and fiddly but we got there in the end and this actually does help bring the sofa together. 
So I'm pretty happy with it by this stage and just uh, got those clips on there just to make sure that we get some really nice tight seams on it. To make the cushions I'm just covering some foam board with uh, some layering of that uh, wadding which is sort of a synthetic wadding on both sides of the cushion. So we want to make sure that it's got some nice um, shape to it. And then all I'm going to do here is just cover it with fabric. So I'm going to cover it on one side and pull that round the edges. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side of the cushion. So it's all going to come round and um, fold up on each side. Once I've got that all done, then all I'm going to do is actually trim it with a very long piece of fabric that I've again cut on the bias and then just ironed it uh, round on each other so that it's got folded in both ends of the piece of fabric. And then that will actually just finish the whole piece up, or whole piece, actually just the cushion up. Um, so here, yeah, here I'm cutting it on the bias, and then all I'm going to do is fold in each side and iron it so that it just stays in place. So that looks pretty good just the way that it is but I am going to be painting these to look like leather and to first off because the fabric is incredibly porous and what I didn't want to do is to waste a lot of paint uh, on the miniature I'm just going to cover it with a layer of Mod Podge just to seal it all in and then it gives something for the for the paint to sit on. So this looks really bright um, and there's a method to the madness around it because I do want some of this brightness to shine through underneath and then I'm just going to mix in gradual shades of uh, black into the red uh, with a little bit of brown as well just to kind of add in that shading and I'm just adding in some details here around where all the button details are just to really highlight those and then I'm going to go back in and add some extra shading for uh, the sofa as well as the cushions. So I've just repeated the process on the second one. I, um, I'm really stoked that I actually have managed to get two of them out. And then I've just done the same as what I did for the sides on the very bottom. So just covered a piece of uh, cardstock in that fabric. I wasn't going to paint the bottom, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. And now I'm going to move on to some feet details. So I'm just going to use some round beads. Uh, they were what I had in stock, some round wooden beads. And I'm just going to try... Uh, first of all covering them with a wash but I realized that it really wasn't going to give me the look that I was after so I'm just going to paint these in black and then let them dry and then I can then I can attach them to the bottom of the sofa So to attach the feet to the bottom, I'm going to use this um, pin vise, which is basically a drill bit into a handle. And I'm just going to drill a hole into the bottom of each corner. And because this has got a little bit of fabric on the bottom, what I do is I drill it in the reverse or move it in reverse first so that it doesn't. So if I'm actually drilling it the proper way, 
it doesn't catch the fabric and then pull a thread so just by reversing it back just slightly and then going forward will actually help with that and I'm just using some pin nails into the bottom and then I'm going to glue the beads to these pin nails I used this method in the other sofa or the other little armchair and it worked really well so I'm just going to repeat that process here so just adding a bit of tacky glue um, just to hold it into place and then I go back over with a drop of wood glue trying to get it down in the middle of the bead uh, which will wrap itself around the nail and then once that's dried it, it, it's a really firm fix to the feet. I've just got this little uh, chest or little suitcase that uh, I bought ages ago uh, and haven't really done anything with it and so I thought it would be a great uh, accessory to add to this, to these sofas. Uh, still haven't got an idea of where they're going to go but um, I'm sure if I don't use that in with the sofas it'll get used somewhere else. But I just wanted to add a little bit more detail to it and I've got these little round gold circles. These are the, uh, these were the, um, from another project where I used um, the outside of the circle for some detail work and I just had these left over. But actually they um, make really good corners um, for, the, for the suitcase. So I'm just going to manipulate those and glue those into place, uh, just punch some little holes for some rivet details and then just um, sort of weather them up ever so slightly. I'm just adding a little bit of silver and then a little bit of a wash over them as well, just to kind of take that bright gold sheen off it. And that's basically all I've done. And just added some colouring to the straps just to, to define those up a little bit. Uh, and then I'm also just going to weather it up just uh, ever so slightly as well, just to kind of add some ageing to it. Um, but nothing too, nothing too major. So there we go, it's all done and I am absolutely stoked with how they've turned out. I'm even really impressed with how the leather finishes turned out. I wasn't too sure how that was all going to come together and just whether the fabric, lines of the fabric would show through too much, but actually it's it looks amazing. I'm really stoked. Still we don't really have a plan for where these are going to go, but I'm sure that that is, will come shortly and I'll formulate a plan around it so watch this space as to where, where these actually end up. If you like this video please consider hitting that like button it really does help the channel. If you haven't done so already subscribe to my channel. I Everything I'm learning I share back with you and hope that it inspires some of you. You learn something and at the end of the day that you get value out of these videos. Just before I show you all of the finished shots of them I've also added a couple more videos at the end that I think that you might like and until next time I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.